the first light of day is like an alarm clock. For creatures that depend on the East Fork Wetlands Project, one of the largest man-made wetlands in the country. It's a lush, soggy landscape 20 miles east of Dallas that provides food, water, and shelter for more than 250 species of birds, for insects and animals. But supporting wildlife is only part of what makes this project so valuable. These wetlands were really created for a more practical purpose, to expand the dwindling water supply for nearly two million North Texans. Rain clouds have become a rare sight around here. During the past decade, drought has dried up lakes the North Texas Municipal Water District relies on to serve nearly four dozen growing communities. Then a plague of invasive zebra mussels in Lake Texoma put that water supply off limits because zebra mussels can choke off the food for aquatic life and block the intake pipes at water plants. It's been very difficult be simply because when we lost 28% of our supply with Lake Texoma as a result of the zebra mussels, we didn't have any surplus. Our option was to buy as much water as we could from adjacent utilities, which we've done. The Water District's Deputy Director, Mike Rickman, says that's why this wetlands project, completed in 2009, has become a lifeline. It now provides 15% of the district's water supply using plants and settling ponds instead of chemicals to treat the water. I can't place a price tag on it. We're using water that we couldn't have developed otherwise. It is very, very difficult to develop new supplies. Rickman says it all came about through a partnership with the family of John Bunker Sands. The landowner wanted to transform over 1,800 acres of farmland into a more natural, marshy environment, but he needed water. The North Texas Municipal Water District had plenty of that and was looking for a nearby location to build a wetlands that would filter treated wastewater so it could more easily be reused. It was almost perfect. Uh, the land had been cleared during the levee construction for the East Fork of the Trinity River back in the 70s. Uh, it was just a huge flat surface, so it even made it cheaper to build simply because we didn't have to do as much uh, earth moving. What they did have to create was an underwater nursery to grow more than a million special plants. And that was just the beginning of the transformation. We process 45 million gallons of water a day comes through here. Uh, we pull water out of the Trinity River. Now volunteers like Bob Ritchie show visitors how the wetlands work. At the north end of the project, the east fork of the Trinity is mostly treated wastewater from laundry rooms, kitchens, and bathrooms. Clean enough for the environment, but not for drinking. Instead of just sending that water downstream, an intake plant pulls it out of the river and releases it into a series of ponds. As it flows downhill, the sediment settles and the plants do their job. There's two kinds of plants in a wetlands. There is aquatic plants, which grow completely underwater, and then there's what's called emergent plants. All these plants grow in hydric soils. Richie explains that as the water flows, plants absorb the nitrogen and phosphorus in a process known as phytoremediation. Those chemical elements found in fertilizer are difficult and expensive for water districts to remove. But for plants, they're food. The major workhorse of the wetlands is the giant, is the bulrush, is the biggest rush that we have. It's the one that does the majority of the phytoremediation. The pickerel weed here, it also is, it's great for wildlife, it's great for bees, but it also does some of the work of the wetlands also. We have aquatic plants like the eelgrass is under the water all the time. In as little as a week, the wastewater is cleansed by the wetlands and piped back to Lake Levon for final treatment. Rickman says the wetlands produce almost as much as a reservoir at about one-fourth the construction cost. If you compare this to Lake Levon, this facility is just under 2,000 acres in size. Lake Levon is 22,000 acres in size. And when this is at ultimate capacity, they will produce the same amount of water annually. This seems like such an intuitive thing to do. Why wouldn't every district build a wetlands? You have to have the raw water to be able to place it through there. You need it adjacent or close to the river, otherwise you're gonna have these extreme pipeline costs because the majority of a project like this 
uh, the pipe I was showing you on the hill, every foot of that installed is about $600 per linear foot. That's where the cost is. You need the right slope so that it can, be, can move by gravity. While many districts cannot find property with those characteristics, this land had all those things and has provided less expensive water more quickly. There's also the added benefit of the John Bunker Sands Education Center, visited by thousands of school children and adults each year. Some may initially come for the wildlife. If you walk out there, you, I mean, it's just amazing to see you get down on your knees and look at all the plants. But they soon gain an appreciation for water conservation as well. People don't realize we cannot make water but the wetland here can naturally clean the water and the plants actually do a better job of cleaning the water than the treatment centers do. It's nature doing double duty, providing sustenance for plants and animals and one solution for quenching human thirst.